what's up welcome to my channel Detroit Poker in this video we're gonna be talking about the top five hands from the previous five days uh, we're gonna be doing these videos every week so if this kind of thing is up your alley definitely think about subscribing and click that alert bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video we have a pretty big pot to start out with so let's jump into hand number one in hand number one we are in the big blind $325 stack and we get dealt black pocket aces. <laughs> Pretty good news. By the time the action reaches me, there's four limpers into the pot for two bucks. And this is a situation that happens pretty often at one, two games is multiple limpers, I think a raise is in order, obviously. Uh, how much to make it is questionable, but uh, generally I just raise to absurd raise sizes to try to <laughs> maximize the value when I have a hand this good. So that being said, I would bump it up to $25, which is pretty offensive in my opinion. However, uh, the action folds to the second limper in middle position. He makes a call for 25 and the cutoff makes the call for 25 as well. And the small blind decides to play for all of his chips, which is only $20 total. So we're going to start off with a side pot of $15. We're going off to the flop four ways. Flop comes Jack 10, eight rainbow. Uh, not the best flop in the world for hand like pocket aces in a pot where there's limp callers. However, uh, I think a bet is in order, and if we're somehow behind, I'm sure our opponents will let us know. So that being said, side to bet $40, and the action's on middle position, and for what it's worth, he covers us by about 100 bucks, and he decides to make a call for 40, and the cutoff folds, gets out of the way. So after the turn we go, heads up for the side pot and three ways for the main. Turn comes off another eight, completing the rainbow, and it's a pretty good card for us. It reduces the combinations of sets, and also, if this guy happened to have a hand like Jack-10, which would make sense in a limp pot, uh, now, obviously, we counterfeited Jack-10, we're winning. I'm not really sure how much to bet here, because we, we do have kind of an awkward stack size to pot ratio. So I decide to just go for an over bet and target, you know, hands like Jack-9, for example, uh, Jack-10 probably wouldn't fold, and hopefully we don't run into Queen-9 or some sort of 8. So I move in for $260 total, and pretty quickly, after only a slight hesitation, middle position does make the call for 260 and we are going to go off to the river. Three ways, all the action is closed. And the river comes a four of clubs, and I remember pretty clearly, I tabled my hand very quickly, Middle position looks at his hand, and he also tables his hand real quickly. And I'm sure if you played any poker live, you know the feeling. When you put your hand on the table and somebody very quickly just tables theirs, usually when that happens, you lose, right? <laughs> However, um, our opponent has pocket queens, so I don't know why he tabled his hand so quickly. Maybe he actually thought he won or he couldn't see my hand all the way or whatever, but uh, we're going to scoop this pot. Pretty big pot, so let's get into the next hand. For hand number two, I am in the cutoff, $360 stack, and we look at king eight of clubs. Under the gun decides to raise first in to $10. Everyone folds to us, so I decide to make the call and play this pot in position. And this opponent covers us by a little bit, not too much. And everyone else folds, so we're off to the flop, heads up, and the flop comes ace of hearts, king of hearts, six of diamonds. Uh, under the gun decides to continue for $10 again, so uh, I'm not going to fold a pair just yet. We're going to make the call and see what he does on the turn. So that being said, off to the turn we go heads up, and the turn comes an 8 of diamonds. So this card is pretty interesting because it gives us two pairs, but also uh, puts a double flush draw on board. And under the gun decides to bet again. For 35 this time, uh, his bet sizing did increase quite a bit, but uh, we did turn two pairs. So I think what I'm going to do is make the call, reevaluate the river. So that being said, off to the river we go, heads up, and the river comes out a five of hearts. So it does bring in the front door flush draw. Under the gun decides to bet a third time for $65, which is a little bit concerning to me, but. I remember thinking very clearly that in the in the moment that you know he increased his turn bet sizing, and then now he increased this as well. So like I felt like something changed on the turn, 
but it gave us two pair. So um, I'm not in the business of really folding two pair, but I definitely don't feel very good about this. But we do make the call and sigh while I'm doing it. And our opponent shows us ace four of diamonds. So I guess it makes sense now in hindsight. Uh, he picked up a diamond draw on the turn and he went for it. And then when the river came and he kind of bricked out, I think he just didn't know what to do. So he tried to merge into a bluff or something. I don't know what he was thinking exactly, but uh, I'd be happy to collect this pot and move on to the next one. In this hand, I'm in the hijack, $780, and I get dealt Queen Jack offsuit. Seated at a very, very good table. There's at least three drunk people on this table, and a friend of mine recommended that I jump on this game. So that being said, button straddle is on, and it's a drunk lady, and she covers by heaps. So <laughs> she's running pretty good lately, and she's been, you know, collecting chips and whatever, giving action. So that being said, uh, by the time the action reaches me, there's three limpers into the pot for five. I decided to raise with the Queen Jack offsuit to $30 for... A lot of reasons. The button does make the call, which doesn't surprise me. Most people defend their straddle. We also pick up the big blind and under the gun one. So we are going to take a four-way flop, and it comes out jack-10-3 rainbow. So the action checks me pretty quickly, and I decide to place a continuation bet for $60. And the action's on the button now, and the button hesitates a little bit and makes the call, and everyone else folds. So off to the turn we go, heads up, and turn comes a 10. So this is kind of an interesting card. Uh, I don't think I can get three streets of value out of my hand anymore, so I decided to check over to the button. And the button sits there for, you know, 10 or 15 seconds, and then announces 100 verbally, and slides in $100 worth of red chips. So that being said, the action's on me, and... I think it's worthy of mentioning that I've been at the table long enough to see uh, some tidbits of how the button plays. Every time the button has gotten two pair or better since I've been there, um, she's moved in for like offensive overbets. So we're talking like 5x pot jams and stuff like that. So that being said, I kind of discount a 10 for that reason. And the fact that she's drunk, uh, I don't think we can really be going around folding top pair. And for what it's worth... She seems like a pretty inexperienced player, definitely unstudied. So do make the call for 100, and we're going to go off to the river, heads up. And the river comes off an 8, so I guess that does bring in uh, a straight draw. So I decided to check, and the button hesitates again, and she verbally announces 100 again. And the action's back on me, and I'm not really feeling that great about this, but... I've played against a lot of drunk people, and basically, um, as far as I'm concerned, they could be up to a lot of things, but I think folding top pair to a drunk person is probably ill-advised, so even though I don't feel that great about it, I do make the call. And the button turns over, ace-jack offsuit, so <laughs> uh, the button's going to win this hand, and we're going to jump into the next one. All right, this is probably one of the best hands in the bunch of this week so buckle your seatbelt. here we go this is probably one of the best games i've ever been on uh <laughs> well maybe not ever but this is a really really good game probably top top five games in the last year so that being said in the hijack 500 hundred dollar stack and we get dealt ace queen offsuit button straddle is on five dollars and the guy that's got the straddle on is he's an action player he gives a lot of action pre-flop post-flop whatever so that being said, uh, one limper into the pot for five, and I decide to raise, and I bump it up to $12, which uh, <laughs> it's, it's too small. Yes, I know. However, um, oddly enough, I was typing notes into my phone for the vlog, so I kind of just autopiloted. I didn't re realize the straddle was on. So <laughs> that's my excuse. I digress. Anyways, uh, the cutoff decides to put in a 3-bet, and he 3-bets to $25, which is basically a min 3-bet. And a little bit of information about the cutoff here. Um, he's probably playing about $400 stack, and he's, like, really, really loose pre-flop. He's playing every hand. Some of the calls that this guy is making is just, wow. So, <laughs> so that being said, um, button calls from a $200 stack. Middle position limper also calls. So the action's back on me. 
And I know that we could probably just call here and go see the flop, but I think a four bet is in order based on what I know about all these opponents. I don't think anybody really has a very strong hand, especially the cutoff. So that being said, uh, if I put this four bet in and I get five bet, uh, we're folding, obviously. So we put a four bet in for $125, and the action's back on the cutoff. And he does hem and haw for a minute, but fairly quickly he makes the call for 125 And the other two guys kind of begrudgingly fold. Uh, they didn't want to, but they did. So off to the flop we go, heads up, and the flop comes 8, 9, 10, rainbow. So we have a gutter to the queen high straight, and we have two over cards, obviously. So we're left with kind of a goofy stack dynamic. The guy has 275 back, and there's about that in the pot, right? Maybe a little more than that. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do. I don't want to bet small and then, like, potentially get jammed on. I want to run the cards out and realize my equity. So I just decided to jam. All in, 275, let the guy figure it out. It's whatever, right? We do have some equity if we're called and he has a hand like, you know, let's just say he has a hand like 7, 8 or something. We do have some equity versus that. And probably have some fold equity as well. Anyways, we jam all in, 275 effective, and the cutoff doesn't think very long at all, and he makes the call. <laughs> so, And after he makes the call, he shows his cards to the button, and then he just turns his cards over and puts them right on the table. And he has 7-5 of spades. So we have to fade a 5, a 7, and a 6. I don't know how I feel about this, but off to the river we go. Heads up. All the action is closed. The turn card comes out a king. And the river is a 4. So we're going to scoop a massively bloated pot with ace high. And <laughs> I'm pretty happy about this one. Let's move on to hand number 5. Okay, in this hand, we are under the gun. We have $426, and we get dealt pocket queens, queen of diamonds, queen of clubs. Well, the game isn't, like, fantastic or anything, but it's pretty good, and everybody's really loose, really passive. So I had to raise first in to $7. Uh, we get four callers, small blind, big blind, middle position, and cutoff. So that being said, uh, we're off to the flop five ways, and the flop comes jack nine four with a couple of spades. Small blind and big blind both checked to me. I decided to continue for twelve dollars. By the time the action reaches middle position, uh, he all ends for thirty two total, and the cutoff hesitates for a little while, tanks a little bit, and he cold calls thirty two. Small blind, big blind get out of the way, and I'm going to call the extra twenty and close the action, and off to the turn we go. And turn comes out a nine. So I'm kind of looking down at the cutoffs chip stack, and it looks to me like he has around $100, and I don't really want to ask because I'm, I'm kind of like concerned that I might give something away by asking how many chips he has. I just figure, you know, it looks like about 100 it's whatever. So for what it's worth, like people always sit there, and they kind of cover their chips while they're sitting there. It's just kind of like a natural sitting position. I don't think people do it deliberately. So I decided about 100 and I think that's enough to do it. And the action's on the cutoff, and he does tank a little while. And then he announces all in, and he ends up having $131. And, you know, obviously we make the call really quick for the extra 31 But I remember thinking to myself, why didn't I just say all in instead of betting 100 It's just kind of stupid. So a little bit of a mistake there, but um, it's whatever. So anyway, we make the call, and we're off to the river through ways. Uh, all the action is closed. River comes off a six, and I show my hand uh, real quickly, and the cutoff looks very disappointed, and he shows King Jack offsuit, and the other guy in middle position shows Jack seven offsuit. So we're gonna scoop this pot. All right, let's do the recap now for the five days that I selected. Uh, what we're looking at is April four through April ten, uh, five poker sessions. The grand total for our winnings for April 4 through April 10 is $1,409. I played 37 hours in that time frame, and our hourly rate is $38.08. Uh, that is pretty decent hourly. However, if I filter for the entire two weeks, because uh, we're doing it five days at a time, so let's do that. How, how about that? So the overview for the first 10 days of poker that I've done at 1-2-0-1-Hold'em. 
profit is eight hundred ninety-one dollars, and we played seventy hours, and we have an hourly rate of twelve dollars and seventy-three cents. That's the grand total. <laughs> so, um, I think we're going to be able to do a lot better than this. So, so hang tight. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And click the alert bell and make sure you select all alerts so you don't miss any of my uploads. Don't forget to click the like button if you like the content. And I will see you in the next video next Sunday. So take it easy. Run good. Smash all flops. Stack everyone at the table. Just don't stack me. Take it easy.